Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. In this video, we are going to derive the equation to the standard hyperbola. I am strongly recommending you to watch the derivation of standard ellipse before you watch this video. Because the derivation of equation to standard hyperbola and the standard ellipse are very similar. So, if you have not watched the derivation of equation to standard ellipse, then I will strongly recommend pause the video right now and watch the derivation of standard ellipse first. Okay, anyway, let's start the video. Okay, so just like ellipse, just like ellipse, what we do is we go for the description. I told you I will derive the proof into five parts in ellipse. Similarly, I am going to do the same thing in hyperbola. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to divide the proof into five parts. First part is the description. Okay, so what we do is, we go for the standard xy plane. And in the standard xy plane, we are manipulating or we are uh, taking the things in such a way that the origin will be the center of the hyperbola just like in the case of an ellipse and then we take two characters and who are they yeah the fixed line and the fixed point so there is one difference i'm sure that you noted that difference now itself in the derivation of ellipse i took the focus and directrix on the left and here I am taking the focus and directrix on the right. So focus as usual we call it S and we are taking the moving point um, what you call P X Y as usual and M means same the projection of the or the foot of the perpendicular of P on the directrix okay this is our directrix and the meeting point of directrix will be Z. Okay, and you know that um, the locus point must move in the ratio SP by PM, where this ratio will be a constant called the eccentricity, and we adjust everything in such a way that SP will be bigger than PM or SP by PM will be a quantity which is bigger than 1 that means the numerator should be bigger than the denominator okay once that rule is satisfied you know that the standard hyperbola will be generated so look at this this p will keep on moving the p will keep on moving and it will generate the standard hyperbola i think you are able to see the movement of p on the right side Similarly, similarly, uh, what you call another part will be generated on this side. Okay, so I am going to call this vertex as capital A and this vertex as A dash. Once more, I will tell you, we are going to do the proof almost similar to that of our ellipse. So, part 1. In the part 1, it is a description. So, what will be your description? consider the standard xy plane and let c be the origin as well as the center of the hyperbola now we take the directrix and the focus on the right the direct is the red line and the focus is s uh, and the focus is on the axis and our moving point uh, p x y is here and P is adjusted in such a way that, remember, uh, this M is actually foot of perpendicular of P. And wherever P comes, M will also appear there. If you want to understand more, you can just check the derivation of the standard ellipse. Okay. Now, P is adjusted in such a way that SP by PM will be a quantity bigger than 1 or rather, the numerator should be bigger than the denominator. Once we collect all the points that will balance this ratio, then of course the standard hyperbola will appear there. So P keeps on moving here, there, here, there and it creates the standard hyperbola. Okay, so that's the first part. 
So, I got one relation S p is equal to E into P m where E is chosen in such a way that E is greater than 1. Now, those who have watched the derivation of ellipse knows very well we are in search of two quantities the distance s to p and the distance p to m and once you get s p and p m you are ready to for the derivation ok now part 2 so what was part 1 part 1 was the description and part 2 just like our ellipse derivation what we do is we think about two special cases look p keeps on moving 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 and m also keeps on moving 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 now you can understand that when p becomes a when p becomes look it will come down come down come down and becomes a and you can see that m becomes z similarly similarly very very similarly when p becomes a dash m will become z again again m will become z so we go for the two special cases what is the first one? When P becomes A, we know that M becomes Z. So, this relation becomes S A is equal to E times A into Z equation number 2. And now, what is the next relation? When P becomes A dash, M becomes Z again. So, S A dash is equal to E into A dash Z that is equation number 3. Now, I think you are feeling like what you call it is completely connected with our derivation of ellipse. Okay. Now, do you remember what was the third part that we did in ellipse? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Addition and subtraction. Those who checked the video of ellipse will understand. We did two things. We did add and then we subtracted. And I told you one more thing. You should subtract in such a way that the longer part should come in the uh, friend it should not be like what you call 3 minus 5 it should be 5 minus 3 so make sure the bigger one comes first so s a dash is bigger i guess yeah s a dash and s a you can look at the picture so i'm going to divide this into two here i'll write adding and here i'll write subtracting equation 3 plus equation 2 equation 3 minus equation 2 so, we are going to get S A dash plus S A is equal to E into A dash Z plus A Z. And here we will get S A dash minus S A is equal to E into A dash Z minus A Z. Okay, now I think you remember the promise that I made long back when I taught you ellipse. When we add one of these sides will be a a dash ah okay by the way i forgot to write those things here so you can note these things along with the picture so a a dash we take it to be 2a so you can write let and we also know that by symmetry the distance between c to a and c to a dash will be uh, what you call equal they will be equal and they will be equal to a and by the way a to a dash is called transverse axis what you call a to a dash transverse axis okay so let's see s a dash plus s c yes no no let's go for the other side a dash z to a z look at this a dash to z plus a z that is the distance a a dash so i promised one of the sides will be a a dash and now no need to check if the right side is a a dash then here the left side will be a a dash ok i will show that to you s a dash minus s a uh, you can see can you see s to a dash minus s a so you are deleting this much so see the remaining portion will be a a dash anyway when you practice the proof you will be like very confident so this is a a dash ok now do you remember what i should do with the other part yeah i should write it uh, like article there are four four remaining terms 
S A dash S A A dash Z A Z. We have to write everything in terms of center. So S A dash. Let's go for S to A dash. I can write this as center to S plus center to A dash. Center to Z plus center to A dash plus S A S A. These two will get cancelled. So two C is equal to A A dash. C S is equal to two A. So C S is equal to A E. Okay, now here a dash z, a dash z, a dash to z. So that is c a dash plus c z minus bracket the remaining a z, a z. That will be c a minus c z. So I am going to get two a equal to e into c z. So c z will be a by e. Okay, now look at this. Uh, I'll draw the initial figure once more, so that you get a very good idea. So we started like this. I hope you remember. This is the center of the hyperbola as well as the origin, and we have our fixed line, the directrix. This is our z, and we have our fixed point that is our s and the moving point p here and of course the right branch of the hyperbola so this is the picture and of course this for similarity the right branch okay and this point is a now can you see that the distance from sender to s the distance from sender to s is a e just imagine if the distance from origin to any point is 5 units the coordinate will be 5 comma 0 so since the distance from c to s is ae i am 100% confident to write s as the coordinate ae comma 0 so what is the coordinate of s ae comma 0 and what is the coordinate of p that is comma y that means immediately I can calculate SP that will be root under X minus AE the whole square plus Y minus 0 the whole square that is SP is equal to root under X minus AE the whole square plus Y square now look at this now a little bit tough come on uh, you think about it if the coordinate of a point is 5 comma 4 then I am 100% sure that you will understand this length this length will be 5 and this height will be 4 so this will be x this distance this will be s and we already know that this c to z look c to z is a by e so this is a by e so the remaining distance that is pm this is m so pm will be x minus a by e i can try to make you understand once more look we just found that the distance between c to z is a by e so remember this much is c to z can you see this much c to z the distance between the y axis and directrix is a by e that is what we derived just now look c to z c to z is a by e and you have to understand that this full length from here to here this full length this much length is x units so the remaining distance pm this much length will be x minus a by e you can pause the video and think about it it's not that much tough so i'm going to write p to m is equal to x minus a by e that's it that's it we are almost near the end that's pm is equal to uh, ex minus a the whole divided by e now 
the last part by equation 1 s p squared is equal to e squared into p m squared I am squaring equation 1 because I can see that there is a square root that will give us trouble. Uh, so, I am squaring e square and I am going to square this person. So, e x minus a the whole square by e squared. So, this will get cancelled. And now, let us go for the final simplification. So, x square minus 2 x a e plus a square e square plus y square is equal to e square x square minus 2 x a e plus a square. So, x square is common 1 minus e square plus y square equal to a square into 1 minus e square. Now, look at this. Uh, in L, uh, in hyperbola, e will be bigger than 1. So, look at this. And when you square a quantity bigger than 1, for example, if you square 2, it will become 4, right? So, this quantity is actually negative. So, what I am going to do is a small trick. I am going to change this into e square minus 1. Of course, I have to put negative. Come on, think about it. If I write a minus b as b minus a, all I have to do is I have to put one extra negative. That is all. So, plus y square and I am going to do the same thing e square minus 1. Look, I am allowed to write a minus b as b minus a, but a small punishment, I have to put one negative. Now, let us divide throughout by minus e square minus 1 and voila, we get the equation to the standard hyperbola. So, this will become square by is equal to 1. Now, if you want the form that you learned in your class 12, you have to call this as b square. Do you remember? You might have by heart a formula like this. So, that is it the equation of standard hyperbola where b square is a square into e square minus 1. So, that is it my friends. Uh, I hope you understood the derivation and I will be back with more videos very soon and like, share, subscribe. That's it. Bye.